Hello and welcome to today's informational session um, as we reach the top of the hour and open up today's informational overview. As you can see on your screen, we're gonna be learning all about the upcoming program at MIT X Pro, a professional certificate in cybersecurity. Um, as we make our way through this next hour together, uh, we're gonna to be touching on two key themes uh, that this program uh, will cover. Firstly, what is the curriculum? What can you expect to learn throughout the program? What are those high level learning objectives? Um, and secondly, how is that curriculum delivered? So what is it like to be a participant in this program? What's that sort of tactical or day-to-day -day, um, experience like? So we're going to be touching on both of these areas as we make our way through this next hour together. A diverse cohort here with us today. Very pleased to have each and every one of you with us. Um, with that, I'm going to advance us forward and introduce today's keynote uh, faculty presenter. Very honored um, and pleased to be joined here by Professor Carrie Pearlson. Um, as you can see on your screen here, she's the Executive Director of Cybersecurity at MIT Sloan, um, and she also runs the Interdisciplinary Consortium for Improving Critical Infrastructure Cybersecurity at the MIT Sloan School of Management. This is certainly an industry expert here to tell us all about this program. Uh, Professor Pearlson, would you like to jump in and say hello to our audience today? Sure, happy to. Hello, everybody. So glad to see people from all over the, the country and the world. Uh, and uh, you can see in my background here, I'm in Cambridge and we had a big snowstorm this past weekend. And this is actually a picture from yesterday. So I'm glad to be warm and comfortable and safe inside my uh, office now, but uh, looking forward to telling you more about the program that we've pulled together for uh, the Cybersecurity Professional Certificate in just a few minutes. Welcome. Thank you, Professor Pearlson. I'm uh, very honored to be joined uh, by you here today and very much look forward to learning more from you about this program. Um, as we set the stage, uh, one of the things that we're hoping uh, to discuss here today is this idea of program fit. So who was this program designed for? So as we get to know one another and see who's with us, uh, we invite you to participate in a poll uh, where you'll describe your level of experience with cybersecurity. So you'll now see a pop-up on your screen. Uh, you'll see a poll pop up, do you have experience with cybersecurity? And we invite you to submit um, your answer. Uh, there's three options here in terms of that experience level. Over half of you are beginning, just starting out, no experience, about 61% of you. Um, another 22% have one to three years of experience. And then about 20%, 17% here uh, with more than three years. So as you're thinking about this program, as you're thinking about program fit um, and your level of experience, we wanted to showcase for you um, the many ways in which this program is going to help add value, um, sort of if you're just beginning, if you're at that mid-career stage, or if you have some experience already with cybersecurity, and certainly for those of you um, with more experience, how, the, how learning the frameworks and methodologies throughout this program are going to help you to formalize your training. Um, so one of the things we wanted to showcase is who is this program designed for? Who did we have in mind when we put together the curriculum? And Professor Pearlson will touch on these ideas a bit further during her presentation. Um, but the big focus here um, is around a, a career acceleration. So for those of you who are launching your career and you're looking to specialize in cybersecurity as a way to move up, uh, this is uh, certainly going to be the right program for you. Um, if you're building career, you might already be uh, in an IT product manager role. You're looking to make a lateral shift um, and sort of learning more about uh, being a leader in the cybersecurity space. Um, this program is going to help get you there. And then finally, of course, career switchers. So for those of you who are, again, um, sort of already working maybe at that mid-career or senior level um, and looking to uh, respond to the demand for cybersecurity talent. Um, so the, the program focus is really around career acceleration. And one of the things we'll showcase for you here today is some of those career preparation um, assets that we've built into the design of the program and the ways in which uh, this program is going to help you to become job market ready. Um, so uh, something to think about um, as you as you make your way through are some potential roles, um, entry level roles that this program will prepare you for. We've listed them here on the screen. Um, identity and access management, security operations, uh, social engineering and others. Um, so as you think of this idea of program fit and some of your uh, you know, career um, opportunities that you're looking at. 
Uh, so we wanted to introduce you to MIT X Pro um, and give you some insight into the pedagogical mission here um, at the school. Um, so the online learning programs here at MIT X Pro um, leverage uh, the incredible wealth of knowledge housed within MIT faculty to make that available and accessible anytime, anywhere uh, to all of you dialing in here. Um, the learning programs are designed around what we know works well in the neuroscience of adult learning. So a lot of what we're going to be speaking about today is how this program is delivered in such a way that allows you to have that real time, real world application of your learning. Um, so the, our programs are application focused. We build in a lot of opportunity for you to build relationships with your peers and your teaching team throughout the program. And, uh, you know, all of this helping you to build skills. Um, that are job market ready. So if you'd like to see other programs at MIT X Pro, we've provided a link here for you. Uh, you can pick up this link and take a look at all of the portfolio of programs. Um, but more specific to cybersecurity, um, I'm going to hand over the spotlight here uh, to Professor Pearlson to take us through the program overview. Um, you can see here, um, in addition to being the ex executive director at cybersecurity, um, Professor Pearlson um, has a number of uh, research um, and industry experience that she brings to this program in business strategy, organizational design. Her current research studies how organizations build a culture of cybersecurity and how organizations build trust to share mitigations for cyber breaches. As she holds a doctorate in business administration and MIS from Harvard Business School, along with an MS in industrial engineering and a bachelor's in mathematics from Stanford University. So at the helm of today's program overview, uh, Professor Pearlson is here to tell us all about this program. Uh, so with that, I warmly invite into the spotlight today's uh, star of the show and keynote speaker, uh, Professor Carrie Pearlson to take us through the program overview. Thanks again for being here with us, Carrie, over to you. Thank you, Marie. I'm still delighted to be here today and to have so many interested people in cybersecurity. I want to tell you a little bit about this program and what our learning objectives are and what uh, you'll actually cover in the program itself. So really, whether you're starting your career in IT or whether you're expanding your career in IT, we've built this program to cover, as Marie said, uh, career launchers, career switchers, and career builders. So we really want people who are interested in cybersecurity. We're not as concerned about your technology background as we are about your interest in learning how to keep yourselves, your organizations, and in general, keeping people safe and secure. There are many, many roles in cybersecurity that are not technical. You don't need a PhD in computer science to be successful in cybersecurity. What you need is interest and curiosity. Technical background certainly helps, but it's not, it's not a deal breaker if you don't have a cybersecurity or a technology background. So in this course, we will take you through a number of real applied cybersecurity concepts in real organizations. We will talk about insights from cybersecurity uh, from our researchers and from professionals. I have a number of people on our research and teaching team here who are actually cybersecurity uh, professionals. They're leaders. They're people that what you would be interviewing with at the end of this program that you and people like the people you would be interviewing with. I don't know if you'll talk to them directly, but they are they are uh, CISOs, chief information security officers, or uh, project design, project managers, or leads. They are the kind of people you would be interviewing with. So we want you to understand what the kind of roles are in cybersecurity. We want to give you the basic language of cybersecurity, and we want to give you an idea of what it would be like to work in the field of cybersecurity. You know, these statistics on this page are um, a little bit old, but they're, they're only getting better in terms of looking for jobs in the cybersecurity space. There are, um, and back in and between March 2020 and March 2021, we saw more than 330,000 alone on cybersecurity. And when you start to add in all the open jobs outside of the United States, you can well imagine the opportunity in this field. So if you're interested in cybersecurity, then this is the field and this might be the, the program for you to really understand how to break into the field so you can get one of these jobs that are being posted all over about uh, the need for cybersecurity professionals. And of course, the average salary, at least in the United States, is quite high. We see uh, average annual pay for cybersecurity well over $100,000 a year. 
Now, of course, it depends if that's an, if you're at an entry level or a more senior level, and it does depend on your skill set. But it gives you quite a lot of opportunity, not only for entry level, but for growth in this field. Let's go ahead and jump more into the program itself, Marie. So you can see from this list here, what we did for this program is we tapped faculty all across campus. So my role as the director of a research consortium in the business school, the Sloan School, really focuses on the managerial and organizational questions around cybersecurity. Things like, how do you build a culture of cybersecurity? How do you know what risk is? How do you think about cybersecurity from a an organizational perspective. And one of my colleagues, Professor Stuart Madnick, is also teaching in this program. And he covers a topic, on the, the session on how do you think about the, the truths and the myths, the, the truths and the fake stuff about cybersecurity? What are the latest breaches and how are they impacting organizations? But then we've tapped people all across the campus. Una May O'Reilly is a professor in our computer science area. Uh, Nikolai Zend Zendovich is also a professor in computer science, but also electrical engineering. You can see a number of other folks listed here. Some are practitioners. Ra Rajiv is actually the head of cybersecurity at the Sloan School. He does that on a day-to-day -day basis. And he has two sessions on network security and on system security. Barbara Johnson is an expert in cybersecurity uh, at the entry level and at the certification level. We've really tapped faculty all across the MIT campus that have an incredible amount of knowledge. Plus, we have some guest speakers. You can see here on this slide a number of people that uh, do some guest speaking in our program. And these are folks that are actually in the seats that you will be potentially interviewing for when you leave our program. Some of these uh, represent executives like chief information security officers and chief information officers. Some of these folks are actually advisors or um, in the role where they are doing penetration testing or doing social engineering protections or doing identity and access management. They are actually in the role. So we have a number of people who are practitioners uh, who are professionals today who share their expertise and their journey uh, in cybersecurity. And I think what's so interesting to me about this is what you'll learn. Some of these folks are not technical. They don't have technical backgrounds. They've learned pretty much what they had to learn on the job in cybersecurity or by taking a course like this program. So taking something like our XPro class really will give you a leg up on being a career launcher in cybersecurity because you'll have the benefit of the wisdom of these uh, practitioners as well as the knowledge from all of our faculty. Let's jump in a little deeper here. So in this program, we rely not just on MIT research, but on some pretty standard frameworks used in the industry. The MITRE ATT&CK framework is one that we use. The Cloud Security Alliance uh, Cloud Controls Matrix is another one we use. That is a number of areas that help you keep the cloud secure. And the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, NIST, has a cybersecurity framework that we use that's threaded throughout the course uh, to think about how do you actually know where to spend your money and where to spend your time. The NIST framework is a particular favorite of mine. In that framework, we talk about um, what are the items you need to protect? How do you identify what needs to be protected and, and what the biggest vulnerabilities are? And then what's your protection plans? And then how do you know if somebody's actually in your system? You know, the average breach, the bad guys are in our systems for weeks, maybe months or years before they actually start to do the damage or even before we notice the damage that they're doing. So how do we detect when our systems have been breached? And then of course, how do we re respond to a breach? And then how do we recover? Do we pay the ransomware? Or do we not pay the ransomware? Um, and then how do we get business back? How do we get back to normal? That's the NIST framework in a nutshell. In this program, we dive into that in a lot deeper ways, talking about what an entry-level person or even a, a more deeper cybersecurity professional would need to know in order to make sure that our organizations are safe and secure and stay safe and secure and can respond and get back up to speed when, uh, if and when there is a breach. So um, this, of course, is the, site, the, the NIST framework. I forgot I had this slide in here, but you can see the five different areas, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. And each of these levels speaks to me both at the senior level. I use this model often when I talk to executives who are not cyber people. 
but it also speaks to the cyber professional because underneath each one of these um, uh, areas are a number of things that a professional would do in order to enact that area. So for example, if you're trying to understand what protect, how do you put protections in place, some of the examples are things like limit employee access to data and information, install surge protectors and uninterruptible power supplies. You can see where these are very actionable steps that are identified by the NIST framework that start to speak directly to security professionals. And what I'd like to point out to you is while many of these are technical, many of these are not technical. Under protect, for example, you can see train your employees. Train your employees is not necessarily technical. Not everybody in the organization needs to know how to configure a firewall. They need to know what's appropriate at their level. And every organization needs somebody to train their people about what they should do and how they should do it. So there's a role for you right off the bat that is a non-technical cyber role. You would help people, help organizations train their employees so that every employee knows what they're supposed to do to keep the organization safe and secure. And this cybersecurity framework, as I said before, is one of my, my favorite ways to look at cybersecurity. So let me tell you just a little bit about the program schedule. At MIT, we like to say that learning at MIT is like learning from a, or drinking from a fire hose. There's so much material in such a short amount of time. The good news about this program is we do have lots of material, depending on your level of, um, before you get here, your level of knowledge and background and experience. Um, added to the amount of information you want to absorb in any given day or week uh, uh, is really the what, what is the limiting factor here. We will provide as much material as you could possibly want to absorb. And there'll be plenty of people who don't get to everything every week. And that's one reason why being in a self-paced program is really amazing. You can work with our, our educators and our learning team, but you can do it uh, to some extent at your own pace during the week. So zero, week zero is actually our orientation week. That's the week where we talk about what is the learning platform. We get you comfortable with things like taking uh, uh, quizzes on or doing um, the, uh, the survey like we just did a few minutes ago uh, about sharing in the chat, about interacting with your learning facilitators. There's no teaching involved, but um, all of the week zero is about how you get up to speed on the systems. Then we've divided this program as eight weeks long. The first section, we talk about uh, the introductory topics. We want to explore things like basic concepts of computer security and their operations. What is the threat landscape? What are the latest vulnerabilities? What are the types of threats and vulnerabilities? You know, not every cyber breach is about stealing personal information or credit card information. The wrong kind of cyber breach can lock up people's systems and ask for ransom or can install something uh, negative inside some sort of this uh, cyber physical systems and shut down a boiler or a chiller or an, a, a production plant might even be as dangerous as installing some malware that would um, have some sort of physical catastrophe example, blow up stuff. So we wanna make sure you understand the whole threat landscape so that you can figure out what kind of area you would wanna work in to help keep things secure. We identify basic components and sequencing and sequences of incidents response so you can see exactly how uh, a malware uh, a, or a breach actually happens. And we explore some fundamental strategies uh, and, and ways that to protect systems. So you can see here in the first eight weeks, we talk about things like cybersecurity foundational concepts and essential frameworks like the, the NIST model that I just went through threats and vulnerabilities, and looking at cybersecurity in urban settings. One of our faculty, Larry Suskind, has an, is an expert in urban planning and urban systems, and he's applied much of his knowledge to the cybersecurity space and the protection of, and so the things he's learned uh, from the breaches in cities that he has studied. Then we spend two weeks on the area of identity and access management. Week six and week seven taught by Barbara, Barbara Johnson. Uh, she's going to take you through what does it mean to actually do identity and access management and how do you, how do you as an entry level person find a role in that position? 
And then we'll come back and we'll summarize the whole eight week module and we'll talk about cybersecurity risk management. So you can see even at the end of the first eight weeks, you would have enough knowledge to go and interview for a job in incidents response and I mean in, in identity and access management. Uh, and that's our goal. Every eight week module you would have or eight week section, you would have enough knowledge to then go interview uh, for a particular type of role in security, even if you came into this program. So in section two, you can see here that we talk about the cybersecurity on a defensive level. Okay, there we go. Defensive cybersecurity. Thank you. So you can see in, in the second eight weeks, week nine through 16, we now talk about things about securing our communications between computer systems and organizations learning how to identify when an attack happens and how do you defend against attacks. The leading approach for cybersecurity defense is what we call defense in depth. Uh, defense in depth is sort of like uh, multiple layers of defense. Think about a castle that has not only a brick wall around it and very high walls, but a moat and a bridge and army to, to, to protect it. Uh, and all sorts of other layers of protection. And for the bad guys to get into the castle, they've got to cross all sorts of different layers of defense. And that's the same thinking that happens in cybersecurity. Every single layer is another type of defense. And for a breach to actually happen, the malicious actors have to make it through every single layer of our security. So the more layers you have of defense, the better organization is. We talk about many of those here. You can see in week 10, we talk about cryptography, Week 11 and 12, we're talking about security operations and incidents response. And then in week 13 and 14, we're talking about systems and networking administration and how you talk, how you think about securing your systems and your network. And then in week 15, we talk about cloud security. So in this section of the program, we're giving you enough knowledge to interview for a basic job in incidents response. For example, somebody has to look at or follow the alerts that the systems post every time there is some sort of anomaly in our system. And that's an incidents responder. And as an entry level person, you could take on a job as an incident responder and learn how to uh, route the, the alerts and to make sure that the organization stays secure. So there's another entry level role that you could interview for just as taking part of our program. But in this particular uh, se section of the program, we really wanna talk about defense because of course we wanna make sure our defenses are as high as possible to keep our organizations from having some sort of uh, malicious uh, act upon them. So, and then the final section we call our offensive cybersecurity and more advanced topics. So in the third eight weeks, week 17 through 24, we talk about things like penetration testing. So in an organization, we know our systems are secure because we test them all the time. Uh, and somebody in the organization has to run the penetration tests. Now that's a pretty complex job. Uh, we're not gonna be able to teach you how to be a pen tester right off the bat, just by taking our introductory course here. However, what we can teach you is enough about pen testing to take an entry level job where you might be an assistant pen tester or you might work with a pen testing team. You would know enough about it to be able to be effective as an as a assistant or as a, a associate in a pen testing team. Um, and, and we really think that's an important role going forward because that role applies not only to secure but every company building their own software they have to make sure that their systems are secure before they put them on the market so there's another whole avenue open to you as a cybersecurity professional we also talk about social engineering that's probably well actually i teach that particular week so it's one of my favorites and in that week we talk about things like building a culture of cybersecurity how do we make sure every single person in the organization does their job and make sure that, that we they're as secure as possible. Again, that's not a technical job. That could be a, a teaching job, that could be an, a marketing job, an awareness job. Those are the kind of roles where we wanna make sure our organizations are safe and secure. We spend a week on artificial intelligence. You know, that is what people think is the promise for cybersecurity. The smarter our systems get, the more likely they are identify anomalies and identify attacks before they have time to do damage. So we'll spend a, a, a session on that. A session on data and privacy and regulation. That's another very important area for cyber professionals to go into. And then we'll spend the one week 
on operationality and Internet of Things. This is the week where we talk about the, the, the cyber physical systems and the fact that cyber breaches could actually uh, do more damage than they are just uh, and, and then just stealing information or locking up our computers. And then we'll conclude the whole program with a discussion about the cyber market. Where do you go from here? What kind of courses might you take? Four weeks. Most grab your imagination and your attention. There are all sorts of courses and such certifications you can go after if you want to be a pen tester or if you want to be an access management professional, if you want to be a social engineering professional. You can see here that there are many, many jobs and, of course, many avenues to pursue after the, uh, the our, our XPRO program. So finally, I want to talk one about one other piece of the program, and then I'll turn this back over to Marie to, to share with you about the actual learning experience. But in this program, we have lots of, of, of interaction, lots of assignments. There are reading assignments, there are activities that we ask you to do, and then there are things like our capstone project, where we will have you actually record in a digital diary, a digital journal, what you're learning each, each and every week, so that at the, end of the, at the end of the session, you have a sense of what you liked and what you didn't like, what resonated with you, where you want to spend more time. And then you'll come away with a, a quality set of activities for yourself. And also what we're going to ask you to do is make a recorded presentation that demonstrates what you've learned. Now, you're not going to learn every step of everything that we cover in 24 weeks. But I'm sure that you will take away so much more information than you have at this moment on cybersecurity. And we want you to record a little video that you could upload to your LinkedIn or share with potential employers and help you move forward in your career in cybersecurity. So that's a high level overview of the 24 weeks of the program. Uh, thank you, for Professor Perlson, for being here with us and taking us through uh, this, this content, uh, these learning objectives, and what participants can expect to know more about in this program. Um, as mentioned, I'm going to take us through a little bit more on the learning experience, some of those more tactical components, and we'll start um, by talking about career preparation. So that capstone project is a good segue into uh, the next portion um, of, of the learning experience, um, which are those targeted opportunities opportunities for you to really focus on uh, career preparation. So in addition to that recording that you'll have as part of your capstone, you can present that uh, through your social media um, and other, uh, you know, job interviews and so forth. Um, throughout your time in the program, uh, we, we've provided for you both uh, within the actual curriculum as well as peripheral to the curriculum um, opportunities for you to explore uh, job market readiness. Um, so you can see um, some of the services provided here are crafting your elevator pitch, sort of how do you talk about uh, what you do and what you'd like to do uh, in five minutes or less. Uh, your LinkedIn profile really helping to give you guidance to set your profile apart from others, um, helping you to build your resume and cover letter, navigate the job search, um, negotiate salary, interview tips, all of this really built into the program uh, through career coaches. So you'll be assigned a career coach in the program to serve um, sort of as your day-to-day -day coach uh, throughout your time, um, helping you to build these skills as you learn uh, more about cybersecurity. Uh, those exercises that are built within the curriculum of the program include job search and interviewing uh, positions. So these are exercises helping you to launch a career in cybersecurity, um, helping you to search through uh, to various opportunities, um, build your personal brand, uh, promote your skills, and communicate cybersecurity concepts to both um, technical and non-technical um, folks. So this is a, a, a rich opportunity for those of you looking to springboard into career advancement. Um, certainly, you'll have um, some, some tactical or tangible material. So you'll have the, the, the capstone project that you can showcase at a job interview. Um, you'll have your LinkedIn profile all ready to go, your resumes, cover letters, and so forth. Um, and then you also have a chance to earn um, a credential from MIT X Pro throughout your time here in the program. So you'll have a certificate of completion upon completing the program. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, but really, as you think about those big returns on your investment, um, there are three uh, key areas here uh, immediately upon entering this program. 
you're broadening out your professional network, you're gaining peers and colleagues from across the globe um, as part of your cohort here in the program. You're also working towards that certificate of completion, that credential uh, from MIT that formalizes your training and helps to showcase your expertise in this area of cybersecurity. And then thirdly, all of the learning um, that you do throughout your time in the program, culminating with that capstone project. Um, so these are three big returns on your investment here that you're taking away from the program. Um, as you think about the way this program is delivered, um, we talk a lot about you know, the ways in which we bring to life in real world uh, these concepts. And you'll see here on your screen some of the ways in which we do that. Uh, so case study analysis is a big part of this program. I'm um, helping you to dive into uh, sort of based on a true story uh, scenarios where you can um, capture some of the key challenges um, and solutions um, that, that other companies have experienced um, and really get that full scope of understanding. So case study analysis is a chance for you to, to take a real world scenario and really examine it from multiple different angles um, as you derive uh, frameworks and methodologies that you can then go and apply to the work that you do. So this is a big part of how we bring to life these concepts is we're really looking at real world examples um, we're helping you uh, to uh, build towards that career, uh, build your career, um, build your career readiness, your skills, earn that certificate of completion, and all of this together uh, with your cohort. So as you think of the many different layers of teaching and learning that take place uh, throughout this program, um, I'm a visual learner. I like to think of things in terms of uh, graphs and visuals. Um, and for me, I, I envision various layers of teaching and learning, sort of concentric circles, if you will, uh, yourself at the center as an individual learner. Um, you have your peers and colleagues representing all different industries, all different geographies who you're learning together with and from throughout your time in the program. A layer beyond that, you have your course leaders. So these are industry experts. Your course leaders also serve as your career coaches. So your career coaches and your course leaders um, hosting weekly office hours, a chance for you to turn on your audio and your visual and engage in live synchronous learning getting your questions answered. Uh, we talked in the beginning about uh, the reciprocal learning environment, and these office hours are certainly a chance for you to do just that, get that individualized support that you need um, throughout your time in the program. Um, your course leaders are also looking at your assignments. They're giving you that customized feedback on your assignments um, and helping you uh, with your career guidance. A layer beyond that, you have your program faculty. We met Professor Pearlson here today and others who, um, who are instructors here in the program who've developed this curriculum and then finally, that larger ecosystem there at MIT Expo, really setting the stage uh, for the learning and the pedagogy here in the program. So many different layers of teaching and learning and relationship building um, folded into the experience uh, throughout your time here in the program. Uh, here's that digital certificate of completion. This is a copy of what it might look like here. And again, just a chance for you to formalize your training and springboard into some of those career advancement opportunities that you might be looking at. Um, as you think about beginning the program, um, we want to make sure you get connected with an academic advisor. There are course foremost experts when it comes to all of the logistics for this program. When is the next run of the program? I might not be able to join here um, in, in a couple of weeks, but I'm looking at a future run. Uh, they're going to be able to help you with those logistics. When does the course start? What are the future runs? What are the dates and times of any of the live learning sessions? Um, they're going to help walk you through all of that and can even produce calendar holds for you to visualize your schedule. Our program advisors are are also going to help with any course policy questions you have. Um, how do I earn that certificate of completion? What's the evaluative criteria for this program? Uh, what happens if I'm late with an assignment? Uh, these are questions that your program advisor can help assist you with. And then finally, as mentioned, um, the registration and enrollment process, that's where we're at right now as we seek to begin um, and prepare to begin this program. So how can I get those application uh, materials uh, collated and submitted before the deadline here? Uh, what are some of the financing options, special group enrollment pricing, and so forth? So your advisors are going to be able to help assist you with these three categories, um, you know, logistics, policy, and registration. Um, so we want to make sure you get connected with an advisor before the end of today's call. And we've, uh, we've uh, established a couple of different channels for you to get connected here. You'll see there's a link on your screen there at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you'd like to take part in the English program, there's a link as well as an email address, mit at emeritus.org. Um, our Spanish speaking program has a link there listed as well as an email address at misiones.latam at emeritus.org. So you can click the link or send us an email 
to get connected with an advisor. Um, if you use the link, you'll be able to schedule directly with an advisor using a, a Calendly app many of you are familiar with um, that will allow you to select a time that works best for you. So a lot of opportunity. We want to make sure it's convenient for you, but that you receive that high level of support beginning right here, right now with today's session. Um, so if you haven't done so already, uh, go ahead and click on the link there to get connected um, with an advisor. They're going to be able to help you out with any of those logistical questions, questions related to course policy and registration. Um, but now at this point, uh, we're going to open the floor back up for any content questions about cybersecurity more generally, about this industry, about this course. Um, we have our, um, our expert uh, keynote speaker here with us, Professor Pearlson, and she's going to stay all the way through the end of our questions. Um, so Professor Pearlson, I'm going to start off with um, this question about um, the experience level that's best uh, with cybersecurity. Um, so as you think about that range from just you know the 61% of us who are just starting out uh, versus those that have a little bit more experience, um, who did you have in mind when this program was designed um, across that range of experience level? Uh, thank you for asking that, Marie. Um, so who did we have in mind when we designed this program really were the, th the three groups of people you talked about at the beginning, the career launchers, people who think they want to go into cybersecurity and are maybe at the beginning of their career. This is a great program for learning the language of cybersecurity and understanding some of the key concepts. Uh, for people who are career switches, switchers or career builders, uh, if you're a career switcher, you're probably in some sort of IT or maybe non-IT program. And so you may know something about your field, but you don't necessarily know anything about cybersecurity in your field. So that's Again, relatively novice in terms of cybersecurity. So a lot of our sessions are about the basic language and the, the best basic concepts that you would need that you could apply to the knowledge you already have from your field. And then the career builders, we have a number of sessions that are more advanced, like our cryptography session or our cloud session for those people who really already understand some of the basic cybersecurity fundamental ideas, then you just want to understand a little bit more about a particular area of cybersecurity to advance your career, then that's who this pro that you're, you're the third audience that we targeted here. Now, let me just make one other comment. I've noticed quite a few questions asking if we prepare you for certificates. And I want to address that specifically because we get that question often in this uh, orientation program. So I, we, we normally say that our program does not prepare you for a test or a cert certification test in any one specific certification because all of those programs, all of those certifications have programs specifically designed for them. They teach you how to take the test, how to um, answer the questions, what the content is for that specific test and how to maximize the score you get on a particular test. However, if you're a novice in this field, you won't do very well taking that course because you got to understand the basic principles and the fundamental ideas behind cybersecurity. So you should take that course, but you should take the practice tests or the practice courses for the certification you want after you take our program. Our program is going to give you the foundation to be super successful and make the most out of your time preparing for a test. So if you're looking to take a test like the um, uh, C, the Comp TIA or the um, uh, CISSP or any of the other uh, certifications that are listed that you've asked about, you should look into taking a, te a, a test prep program. But this program is not a test prep program. This program is fundamentals. So we're going to teach you enough so that you can take a test prep program uh, after you finish our program and you'll just do really well because you'll already understand the fundamentals and you'll understand how it fits in the context of cybersecurity, not just how to answer a question or how to respond to a particular test on a certification. So our last lecture, actually I did that lecture, it's lecture 24, week 24, we actually talk about how do you go about preparing for a certification now that you've got the fundamentals under your, uh, under your belt. So uh, hopefully that answers your question, Marie. It's for uh, career launchers, career builders, career switchers, and people who are interested in getting those certifications but really don't have the fundamentals to take the test prep course yet. 
Uh, thank you, for, Professor. Um, this is a dynamic uh, program. So this is not a MOOC, a massive open online course. Um, this is a cohort, a specialized cohort model. Um, and what that means for you is that as you develop your interests throughout your time in this program, you're going to be able to reach out uh, to your peers, to your colleagues, to your course leaders, and to your faculty, um, and really get those additional resources. If you'd like more uh, reading mat material related to a certain topic, um, you'll be able to speak with your course leader, reach out, um, and find collaboration collaborators within the program. Um, so a lot of that uh, individualized support comes through office hours. And Christopher, I saw your question here. Uh, what are those office hours like and, and, and how are they useful? I know Ohisiri has responded here. Um, but again, a great one for the live audience here today. Um, the timing of these office hours vary, but we do uh, create a, a schedule that allows uh, those of you from all across the globe to have access to a convenient time uh, to come in and take part in these live teaching sessions that take place with your course leaders. Um, they typically happen um, around noon or after 5 p.m. Eastern time if you're if you're trying to take a look at your schedule ahead. Um, but these are all recorded in real time. So very much like this webinar here today, um, everything that we do live is recorded and then posted into the platform as a simulated live experience. So even if you have to miss um, one of the office hours or any of the live synchronous learning, uh, you'll be able to go back in, watch the video, watch the questions in the chat and cover everything you may have missed and review all of the material. Um, so we wanted to, to create a, a program that gave you a nice blend of synchronous and asynchronous learning so that you have the highest level of convenience. You can really design a schedule that works best for you. Um, you can see it's a 24 week program and we estimate 15 to 20 hours per week. Um, so that's a big time commitment as you think about biting off uh, 15 to 20 hours. And so we wanted to develop a program that gives you a high level of convenience. So you can touch on um, the various videos and assignments and discussions around a schedule that works best for you. So the videos are on demand. You can watch them again and again as many times as you need to um, and, and touch in on the discussion threads and many of the other activities um, on a schedule that works best for you while still having these opportunities to have live learning um, and relationship building. Uh, so I wanted to call our attention to that as well um, as you think about uh, joining this program um, and the various time commitments involved. Um, certainly a lot of opportunity, um, but also um, a lot of flexibility um, in terms of setting up a schedule uh, that allows you to uh, successfully complete this program. Um, so Professor Perlson, again, on the sort of job market readiness, and um, we've talked about that quite, we sort of peppered that throughout uh, today's presentation. Um, as you thought about designing this program, what were some of those representative roles that you had in mind um, that you wanted to ensure this program uh, would help folks to become ready for um, after completing it? Yeah, thank you, Maria. And I also want to address the question about is the certificate enough to get a job in cybersecurity? So let me address that as I talk about the kind of roles we believe we're preparing you for. First of all, as part of the design for this program, we talked to uh, uh, several dozen cybersecurity professionals, either uh, executives who hire people into these roles or people in these roles or uh, uh, instructors preparing people for these roles. Uh, we believe that the, the jobs that we have targeted are very doable entry-level jobs for you to get outside this at, when you finish this program, even if you don't have one of the more advanced cert certifications. Personally, I would recommend that you take our program and you start interviewing for jobs. And then if you find that you need a certification, you can go back and get that. But most of the certifications require some experience. So how are you going to get the experience if you haven't had the job? And how are you going to get the job? if you haven't had the experience. That's where our program comes in. So we targeted uh, four entry-level jobs uh, based on our research about where there are needs for jobs, where there are entry-level opportunities, and where the pay is decent enough where you would feel that the payback for the time you spent in this program was way worth it. Uh, the, the different jobs we targeted are uh, identity and access management. So think about this. Somebody has to be in the team who makes sure passwords work, who help people who can't reset their password, who want to make sure that systems have the right identity codes associated with them or, or controls associated with them so that only the people who are authorized to use those systems can get into those systems. So that's one type of job that it has a lot of entry-level opportunity. A second one is uh, for uh, uh, securing um, security operations center. As I said, when I talked about 
module two or session section two, uh, weeks nine through 16. Uh, there are security operation centers where information is coming in from all of the automated defense mechanisms and protections that organizations put in place. And somebody has to watch those and see when those alerts happen uh, to make sure that they're rooted to the right person, that, that they're cleared, that they are actual breaches and not anomalies or that they are um, attended to. And again, there's a, there's a very human interaction role here. It doesn't, have, doesn't take uh, somebody who's been studying rocket science to do it. It takes somebody who understands what security operations are about. So session two, module two, weeks nine through 16, will give you enough uh, background to interview for those. And then in the third eight weeks, we really cover two different things. One, I talked about pen testing, penetration testing. Uh, we think that's a great field for people interested in cybersecurity. At some point, yes, you've got to know enough coding to actually be a pen tester. Um, we don't teach coding, but we do give you enough background that um, if this is of interest to you and excites you, you can go back and learn the kind of uh, systems and coding that you would need to know to actually be a lead pen tester. But you could learn on the job. You could be an entry-level pen tester. You'll know enough about what it is and why it's important from our program to get a job, entry-level job in that field. The other area, which I, I think there was a question about that also, is on social engineering. Um, a lot of the breaches start today because uh, somebody in an organization does something they weren't supposed to do, whether that's open an email they shouldn't have opened or opened a file or downloaded a file or stuck a thumb drive in their system that had some uh, infectious code on it, uh, did something on the internet. I mean, those are all what we would call human error. There's no amount of technology that's going to stop that from happening if a person in the system does something that they weren't supposed to do. So today our biggest vulnerability are the people in our system. And if that's a vulnerability, then fixing that vulnerability is not technology. Uh, people will always be able to get around whatever the technology is. So now it becomes more of education, of awareness, of um, building per, uh, performance evaluation criteria, having rewards and punishments. And so uh, there needs to be some sort of uh, organization within an or within companies that helps the people in the organization know what to do and how to do it. And that's exactly what we talk about in, uh, I think it's week 20 or 22, when we talk about social engineering. And those kind of jobs are also available. Now, somebody asked me, uh, asked in the chat, if you could get a job from our program. Of course, we can't guarantee you a job. We're not hiring you at the end of the program. However, Many of the executives we talked to said that if, if we had people that had the skills we've covered in this program, they would hire them on no questions asked, that they are definitely the skill set that they are looking for. Um, the, the kinds of jobs you're interviewing for would be entry level jobs. And frankly, I think everybody would like to hire somebody that's got certifications, but with 300,000 job openings last year and even more this year, there is such a need for you to be in cybersecurity that if you actually have the fundamentals that are needed and you pass the other uh, basic human, you know, decent kind of employee job uh, requirements, you're honest, you're ethical, you're curious, you want to do a good job for your employer, um, you want to make sure that the company stays safe, those kinds of things, then I'm pretty sure you'd be able to get a job with the knowledge that we're teaching you in this program. So let me stop there, Marie, and see if there's other questions. Yes, uh, thank you, for Professor Pearlson. And I'll invite you to take a look. Um, so we've got two more questions here. Uh, one is from Micah. How much technical uh, detail do we get into? Are we coding in this program? And then Christopher sort of asking about what does a job look and feel like in cybersecurity, uh, looking to kind of have more work-life balance? Um, so I invite you uh, on both of these, the technicality of the program, as well as uh, whether somebody who's just starting out um, will be able to have that flexibility with their schedule um, getting a job in cybersecurity. Okay, so first, Micah's question, is there any form of coding involved in this course? Um, there's no like coding that, that you're referring to here. You're not going to write programs or write firewalls or do any kind of in-depth coding. There are some sessions, particularly like our cryptography session, uh, where we talk about coding and we talk about how coding is um, affected, uh, how you, how you want to think about cybersecurity uh, as you're thinking about coding, but no, this is not a coding course. And then Christopher's question about the um, the, the job, 
Uh, someone over 40, how, how far could one exceed in this career at a later stage in life? Honestly, Christopher, 40 is not old. Um, this field has such a need for cybersecurity people. I don't think you would experience the same kind of age discrimination at 40. Um, maybe at 60, they might say, well, look, why are we going to invest in you in an entry level job? Because you're not, you know, you're, you're closer to the end of your career. But I would say as someone over 40, you don't have anything to worry about. Um, but I honestly couldn't speak to that because I'm not the one actually doing the hiring. However, I do believe that in cyber, there's so much opportunity and so much need that compared to other areas and other kinds of jobs, you would have the kind of flexibility that you, you could find a job. Let me put it that way. You could find a job that would give you the kind of flexibility for your family and the work-life balance that you're seeking. Um, in terms of a salary range, honestly, that's so dependent on where you live and the kind of experience that you already have. Uh, in whatever industry you've been in, whether you've been a hairdresser or a nurse or a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer, I mean, all of those are backgrounds that could be relevant to cybersecurity if in the right organization, they would take advantage of that background. I would um, uh, encourage you to, to do some additional research on things like Glassdoor or LinkedIn to find out what the salary ranges are in your area um, for your kind of background. Uh, but in cybersecurity. And I think you'll find them to be pretty attractive and in, in part, of course, because there's such a need for you guys. So I hope I've answered that. I, I know I haven't specifically given you a number, but I think um, it, that's how I think about the salary ranges and the, the uh, kind of opportunities you'd have if you decide to go into cybersecurity. Right. And, and remember, uh, Christopher, as well, you're not on your own. Uh, you have those career coaches. So if you're looking for an organization that will provide you with more of that work-life balance, or if you're looking for a certain salary range as part of your career preparation throughout your program, you'll be working with a career coach who can help you navigate your job search, find the right organizations, and really find the right fit. So that's a big part of your learning here in this program is that chance to have that customized career coaching. Thank each and every one of you for joining us here today. It's been an absolute honor at learning shoulder to shoulder with each and every one of you. Um, Professor Pearlson, any final words of wisdom that you'd like to leave us with as we sign off here today? Well, Marie, you know, I just feel so passionate about the idea of people moving into cybersecurity. I should tell you that while I personally do have a technical background from very early in my career, so well over 30 years ago, most of the work that I do today is not technical, it's organizational. And, and that's why I say it's my personal experience that while having a technical background will help you understand things and maybe take you in a different direction in cybersecurity, there's room for all of us here, whether you're a cyber professional, whether you're a technology professional, whether you're a non-technology professional, this cybersecurity field is just in such need of smart, dedicated, motivated people that um, if that describes you, I would highly encourage you to look into uh, some program in cybersecurity and hopefully that would be our program. And uh, thank you again, Professor Pearlson for being here and for staying all the way up through the end of our questions. We sign off here uh, with our gratitude and with a heartfelt uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good day to all of you from around the globe. Thanks again for joining.